The KSI vs. Jake Paul fight is much closer than it seems, so the question of who will win is more intriguing than ever, especially when you consider that both fighters have only lost once. The only defeat they both suffered was at the hands of Tommy Fury. So let's break down and compare how they fared against a professional boxer. Based on the analysis of their fights with Tommy, we'll make a prediction for their upcoming bout. Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. Tommy started with an explosive double jab and Jake with diving and clinching. That is, from the first seconds, both showed what kind of game plans they have. Tommy wants to control his opponent's jab and drive him to the ropes. Jake does his best to knit and exhaust the opponent, make him mad by not letting him work. After a couple of annoying moments in the clinch, Jake finally calmed Tommy down. Thanks to this, Jake successfully counterattacked Fury's jab with his check hook. By the middle of the round, Jake connects with the right overhand. This punch is a major gap in Tommy's defense, which has already opened up in the second minute of the fight. So Tommy realized that such intense pressure helps Jake dive under his punches and tie in the clinch. So he decided to work as a number two and attack near the ropes. Such passive work from Tommy immediately revealed Jake's flaws. That's why Tommy connected with a powerful combination at the end of the first round and continued to do so in the second. At this point in the fight, Jake realized that he will miss more and more, which is why he began to hit only the body. But as I said before, this is one of the biggest mistakes of young fighters. When an inexperienced fighter loses the initiative and cannot hit the opponent's head, he is morally lost and immediately tries to hit only the body, which makes him predictable. Such predictability opened the way for Fury's powerful jab, but Jake did not give up and from time to time began to catch Tommy with a hook. Near the end of the second round, Paul increasingly began to catch Fury on pure timing. The reason for these clean shots was Fury's negligence. He successfully attacked the whole round with feints, but at the end, he got lazy and was throwing just with speed. Because of that, Paul timed him. He understood every swing Fury makes is a blow. He stopped throwing feints. Tommy's corner immediately told him that his jab was too predictable for Paul. So Fury came out immediately in the third round with a bunch of feints. But Jake immediately noticed that after the combination, Tommy stagnates, and this is a great chance to throw a long, powerful jab. After eating a couple of powerful punches from Paul, Tommy began to move more, like in the first and second rounds. In the final seconds of the third round, Fury began to catch Jake while moving backwards. Between rounds, Fury's corner immediately analyzed all the mistakes Tommy made in the last round that I told you about. In the next round, he fixed every error. Tommy fought in round four as if he had gained a second wind, but respect for Jake Paul, he ate heavy blows, but persevered and continued to move forward. The fifth round was Jake Paul's comeback. Tommy was visibly tired and increasingly stagnating in front of Paul, because of which Jake was throwing heavy punches on the standing target. This is where the fight begins for Paul. He knew he was likely to lose the first four rounds. Jake's stretch of the fight where he can win begins in the second half of the fight. The fifth round is the first confident round in Paul's piggy bank. However, the strange referee for some reason decided to take one point from Jake. While the referee takes a point from Paul, you can hit a like on this video. Tommy starts using his powerful uppercut, which Jake happily sat down on. Paul starts eating uppercuts and Tommy's overhands. But at close range exchange, the strange referee again decided to become the star of this fight and for some reason took the point from Tommy. In the seventh round, Fury was more active than in the previous two rounds and repeatedly punched fast combinations, while Jake tried to connect with only one powerful blow. Because of the activity and number of punches, this is Fury's round. However, the madness continued in the eighth round where Tommy Fury's fatigue took its toll on his footwork. 
When he was closing distance to throw a jab, he didn't use feints and very sluggishly stepped on the front leg, because of which Paul's counterpunch dropped him. The physical preparation of Jake Paul once again helped him take the second half of the fight. The competitiveness of this fight depends on the physical fitness of Tommy. While he was fresh, Jake was not his match, but fatigue equaled the scores, thanks to which Paul won a few rounds. KSI versus Tommy Fury. From the very first second, both fighters reveal their game plans. KSI uses his karate stance to measure the distance and lands a right hand punch after which he shifts in the direction of his strike. Tommy aims to counter this move with a left hook, somewhat like what Joe Fournier did in his fight against KSI. In the clinch, JJ works much more aggressively and actively. After the clinch, it's as if we're back to the start of the fight. KSI leaps and throws feints, and Tommy waits for a counterattack. Instead of a jab to the head, JJ throws his classic straight to the body. This takes Tommy by surprise, causing him to step back. It's clear that Tommy is slightly frustrated, as KSI essentially stands near the ropes, but he can't press him into an uncomfortable position. Because of this, Tommy decides to simply rush in with punches, which KSI dodges with a veteran's dive. That's when you dive below the opponent's waist and essentially put your body in a difficult-to-hit position. Afterward, he enters the clinch and aggressively lands head and body shots. It's evident that these are not pity punches from KSI because in a less advantageous clinch position, his punches help him control the opponent's position. And now, Tommy is in the corner. And it's clear that KSI set the tone and pace of the fight. His style is highly uncomfortable for Tommy, causing him to fight less and think more about how to overcome the discomfort created by his opponent. Midway through the round, he started to find his timing a bit, but the break due to the headshot seemed to nullify his progress and timing. KSI is now much more cautious with his jab feint. If you look closely, you can see that he now positions his elbow near his face to avoid getting caught by Tommy's counterhook. However, Fury doesn't wait like he did in the first round and moves forward with a hook, but misses. The idea is to pressure JJ and put him in uncomfortable positions. However, this aggressive pressing leads to a shot to the back of the head, resulting in a point deduction for Tommy. This time when the fight resumed, Tommy's timing was still intact. When KSI threw a straight punch, Fury caught him with a hook. Both fighters landed solid blows on each other, but as Tommy tried to catch KSI with an uppercut, JJ suddenly threw a straight right without telegraphing it. This punch forced Fury into the clinch, from which KSI launched a furious attack. For the first time in the fight, Fury uses a double jab, light punches to obscure his opponent's vision. He follows it up with a hook, which KSI dodges. Both are somewhat passive in the clinch. Tommy uses a double jab, but JJ immediately ducks under it and enters the clinch. The next segment of the fight is similar, but this time both fighters are more active in the clinch. It's noticeable how KSI's feint is working. Tommy stops every time to counter. After three of these feints, JJ lands a powerful straight, the strongest punch of the round. This round felt more competitive because Tommy added the jab to his arsenal. The jab helped close the distance, but Fury couldn't land a good solid punch, unlike KSI. JJ decided to hold his lead hand up, followed by an overhead punch. Tommy dodged and rushed into the clinch, although he didn't do much in the clinch. As they exited, he managed to land two powerful hooks, followed by a good jab to the head and a hook in pursuit, causing KSI to dive into the clinch. However, even in the clinch, Tommy appeared much more active. 
This was the first segment of the fight that Tommy definitely won. Tommy continues to successfully attack with a very quick jab feint, followed by a jab on the inside. Fury expected the clinch, so he attacked his opponent at the entry into the clinch. It seemed like JJ realized he was losing the round and didn't want to waste time. However, his attack was highly predictable, allowing Fury to counter with a left hook. KSI tried to make up for it in the clinch, but even there, Tommy was much more active. However, JJ's desire to make up for lost ground worked against him. His aggression, combined with predictable attacks, helped Tommy evade all the punches and entered the clinch. The only successful attack for KSI in this round was a straight to the body. Afterward, he managed to avoid all of Fury's punches. This round is the first clear round for Tommy Fury. JJ begins this round aggressively as he lost the previous one, but once again, his eagerness to move forward plays against him. Tommy immediately counters with a hook, following it up with a jab on the move. When KSI is about to leap in again, he stops him with a jab. In this segment of the fight, Fury looked as everyone expected him to. KSI realized that the initiative was not in his favor, so he quickly clinched. JJ rushes again, and Tommy catches him perfectly with a counterhook. It's also noticeable that Fury has figured out that by constantly changing positions in the clinch, KSI won't have the opportunity to attack. This moment in the fight is interesting because both fighters are now attacking with head movement, causing both to miss their punches. However, when they decide to strike without head movement, they both land their shots accurately. Now Tommy rushes, causing his attack to miss entirely. KSI enters the clinch to cool down his opponent's aggression. Here, Fury demonstrates perfect timing, immediately throwing a hook after KSI's jab feint. Tommy lands the hook before JJ could deliver his overhead. Both land a precise jab, Tommy and KSI, but JJ doesn't let up on the pressure and manages to land another hit. However, KSI's subsequent combination misses, and we have another chance to enjoy the clinch. Fury is much more active in the clinch, but in the next clinch, JJ works more actively. What's amusing is that when the referee separated the fighters, Tommy decided to land a hook on KSI. Afterward, we witness three more exchanges where both fighters miss their punches and end up in the clinch. In the final seconds, JJ lands a jab and the fight ends with another clinch. Like the fifth round, this round is extremely difficult to score. Depending on how you score this round, you'll get either a draw or a win for KSI but certainly not a victory for Tommy Fury. How did you score this round? The Verdict One thing is clear to everyone. KSI and Jake had radically different game plans for the fight. Paul was dead serious about outboxing a boxer, relying on his strength. However, no matter how funny it sounds now, at the time of the fight, it seemed reasonable. I remember when I published my analysis of the fight and predicted that Tommy would win based on his technique. I felt like a madman because everyone around me was mocking Tommy's skills and talking about Jake's incredible power. So it's not surprising that he fell for his own hype and genuinely planned to outbox and even knock out Tommy. Although he didn't manage either, he deserves credit. It was Jake who landed the hardest blow on Tommy, resulting in a knockdown. However, to be completely honest, it's apparent that Fury stumbled to some extent, and Paul simply finished what was started. Based on all of the above, it becomes clear that KSI's team thoroughly analyzed Paul's fight and all his mistakes. Around this time, JJ began to change his style from windmill to karate boxing. It's probably not directly related to Jake's performance, but the trainers noticed it. 
They understood that KSI would need a lot more time to master basic skills in the classical boxing style. So they decided to change their approach and turn JJ into a highly uncomfortable fighter for traditional boxers. This is why he performed better against Jake in terms of scoring the fight. KSI won many more rounds, and if you objectively score the fight, there's no victory for Tommy. Maybe it's a draw or a win for KSI, but it's certainly not Fury's victory. KSI's uncomfortable style didn't allow Tommy to work the way he wanted. JJ essentially acted as a disruptor. He prevented his opponent from boxing and constantly disrupted the rhythm of the fight. As a result, he couldn't land as powerful a blow as Jake Paul did, but his overall performance was more successful. It's this uncomfortable style of KSI that will be the main question in the fight against Jake Paul. Can Jake adapt, even if Tommy couldn't? If this fight had happened before the Fury fight, I could have said with certainty, no. But now there's a lot of footage on JJ, and it's clear that even Joe Fournier tried to catch him with a check hook, creating a very realistic plan to beat KSI. That's why I'm confident that Jake will build his entire game plan around catching JJ with a check hook and attempting to knock him out. At the same time, KSI will incorporate more feints to disrupt the fight, and when he wins enough rounds, then he'll go hunting for the knockout. At this point, one thing can be said for sure. If KSI wins the fight, it will likely be by a decision of the judges. If Jake wins, it will be by a late round knockout, where he'll be losing on points. How do you think their fight will go?